you have a first class seat to watch the Lori Oil Shop. It looks like everything is all set. So there she is, Lori Oil. Hi everyone, welcome to the Lori Boyle Show. It's great to see you. I have a great guest for you. His name is John Elledge. Josh, I'm sorry, it's Josh Elledge. Sorry about that, Josh. That's fine. And uh, he is a very successful entrepreneur. He's gonna talk to us about getting more uh, PR for your business and how to do that with social media. He's also a Twitter expert and he's gonna give us some tips on that too. So Josh, welcome. Thank you so much, Lori. I appreciate it. So tell me about your business and how you started. I know you'd started with uh, cut your grocery bill in half. Uh, yeah, so Savings Angels, my primary company or my first company anyway. Um, so we launched that over 10 years ago. And that is a, um, so our, our aim with, with Savings Angel is just as you said, to help people cut their grocery bill in half. And we're very good at what we do. And, um, you know, Savings Angel is a, is a service. It's a membership that makes a lot of sense because a lot of people are trying to save money. And so all we simply do is we database everything that grocery stores all over the country are putting on sale. Um, and then at the same time, we also have a huge database of manufacturer coupons. And so if you're familiar with like extreme couponers, you know that they do a lot of work. Um, so what we basically do is do all the research that they typically do and we make that available for our members. And we also allow them to set alerts and say, hey, I need diapers, like whenever I can get them for like $2.99 a package. So we'll search around the clock looking for the best combinations of, of coupons and sales. Um, and when we find that, that's when then we alert them to that particular offer. So it's a, it's a huge um, help um, to, to moms and dads that are, you know, anybody else is just trying to save money because honestly, um, you know, with the right activity, pretty much anyone can chop off about two, three, four hundred dollars a month from their grocery bill if they just shop a little bit differently. And um, but yeah, so we launched that company ten years ago, and um, and and I think you know what we'll get to in this conversation is the way we did it uh, is that we did it with next to no advertising at all. I mean, we launched uh, just doing completely PR, and today, ten years later, we've done over five million dollars in sales and like less than $500 in advertising. <laughs> wow, so that's all, incredible. Yeah, that's all we do. Yeah, that's incredible. So um, give us a couple of tips on, on how you did it and how we can uh, get more PR for our business. Uh, well, um, so I'd say that the number one problem that, that I tend to see, uh, particularly with small business owners, is... Um, and this, this happens when I get feedback from, from entrepreneurs who say, well, Josh, I tried PR and it didn't work. And I ask them, so what did you do? And they'll say, well, you know, I emailed a bunch of journalists and nobody responded back to me. I said, well, that doesn't surprise me. The most important thing that I think most business owners can do is really spend um, you know how like with SEO, there's your, there's your SEO work that you do on your website, and then there's your SEO work that you do um, with other websites, right? Because you want the links in and that sort of thing. Well, your on-site SEO is, is really critical. It's really important. I mean, if you don't have that uh, down well, um, it's going to be really, really hard for you to be rewarded by Google. So, similarly, with public relations, it's really important that you establish your authority um, before you start reaching out to all the influencers. Because honestly, if you start reaching out to influencers and your website looks terrible, no one's going to respond back to you. Mm -hmm. And unfortunately, we all really do this. Um, when we get an unsolicited email, you know, when we look at it, we're going to make a snap decision. And we try to do that as very quickly as possible because we're all protective of our time. Influencers and journalists are exactly the same way. And so they're looking for small clues. And those clues usually are, number one, how does the email look? Is it formatted well? Um, is the pitch solid? Um, or are they just trying to sell their thing? That's pretty common, unfortunately, with a lot of entrepreneurs, especially those who um, 
no marketing because marketing and PR are very different. Um, but there's a few other things. Um, so hopefully you have a professional signature. And when I click through to your website and it just looks unprofessional or you scroll down to the bottom and it says copyright 2014 or 15, it just looks like you're kind of asleep at the wheel. Mm -hmm. And um, that's not good. Right, <laughs> we, don't right. want, we don't want people to be asleep at the wheel because it just, it just, it, it just diminishes um, your level of professionalism. And so, you know, that plus your digital reputation. So if we do a Google search for whoever the expert is and nothing comes up, obviously there's someone who's just getting started. So again, not real high ranking on the authority scale. And then finally, your social media says a lot about you. So Twitter um, partic in particular is the go-to platform that uh, really has replaced, I think, what a lot of companies would have had to have spent uh, many thousands of dollars in order to get the connections. Today, Twitter can allow you to do that. But the problem is, is most people don't take the time um, to make sure that they have a, a very professional profile um, and that they're using Twitter correctly. I'm not saying you have to like Twitter because some people are just like, I don't get it. I don't want to get it. That's fine. You don't have to like the phone, but you need to use the phone in order to communicate with people. So same thing with like Twitter. Um, it's just get to a level of professionalism, use it just enough or at least systematize portions of Twitter. And then you're just going to be respected a lot more when you use that communications tool to connect with any influencer on the planet you want. Right. So you're, so you're saying that your website has to look great. You know, that's your first line of defense is your website and then use your Twitter to your advantage. And speaking of Twitter, you actually uh, give a course on Twitter that's available on your website that you can download and look at. And it's great. I did it and uh, it is really, really good. So I recommend that you go to Josh's website and download his Twitter uh, class because it's really, really good. Thank you so much. Yeah, yeah I, I really, uh, you know, I feel like that that's one social media platform. You know, sometimes we, we worry or we stress. You're like, oh, I have to know Instagram and Pinterest and Snapchat. No, it, it's like, I, I, I honestly, I tell most of our members or clients, I say, look, you know, pick one or two social media platforms and just, you know what? Sur just go in survival mode on the rest, honestly, if, they're, if you think that they're in any way important to you, but pick one or two and just dominate those ones. Right. And, um, you know, don't worry about the rest because it's better to be an absolute rock star in one social media uh, platform than it is to be, mm, you know, in all of them. Right. Yeah, I think so too. So probably uh, Twitter is really important. Your website, maybe Facebook or LinkedIn. Those, those are the big ones, I think. What do you think, Josh? Well, so LinkedIn is also very important, but I don't know that it's really critical to use it as a social media platform as much as I think it's just a great place to put your resume. Um, you know, go ahead and get some, you know, some mm. validation from, from your peers, um, you know, maybe a testimonial to the things you care about. I think that the vast majority of journalists don't use it to necessarily network with, but they'll go and check it out just to say, well, I just want to see what your resume is. And mm. they figure, you know, if you put it on LinkedIn, it's probably truthful because someone's going to call you out if it's not. <laughs> right. So yeah, it's, you know, honestly, you know, with LinkedIn, it's just like, you know what, spend the, spend a couple hours, just make sure it's up to date, complete. And it, it just communicates a lot of authority. Um, you know, you might go so far as to have um, some certain things um, designed and or written by uh, a copywriter. Uh, I, I believe in invest uh, in our businesses. I believe that investing in our businesses breaks stagnation. So if you're, if you're in a position right now where you're frustrated that your business doesn't really seem to be doing much, like you're, you know, whether it's your audience size isn't growing, your traffic isn't growing, your sales aren't growing, your income's not growing, chances are it's just going to take, it's not going to automatically just break on its own, that, that stagnation, that cycle of stagnation, but we have to do something to interrupt that. And so, Obviously, getting a big media break is something that I'm a big fan of, right? Because we do a lot of work with our members and, and help them get those media breaks. Um, but again, I think a lot of times, um, 
and it's tough, right? When, if you're in a position where it's like, gosh, I, you know, I don't have the money to invest in my business, but at the same time, I'm not making money. And I, that frustrates me too. So I want to make money. Um, you just have to be very, very thoughtful. You know, sometimes it just, you know, maybe you're going to have to go through a season where you're putting, you know, 10 plus hours into your business every day. Um, you know, for those of us who are full-time, maybe it's like 16 plus yeah. hours. I've been there. I've done that. I go through those cycles. And as a result, we usually end up getting pretty great returns from, mm -hmm. from those seasons of sowing those seeds. Right. What do you think of blogging? Do you do a lot of blogging? Well, yeah. <laughs> uh, who's not blogging, Lori? That's yeah. what I want to know. Yeah, exactly. Uh, yeah. So uh, I'm a fan of blogging, obviously, because um, Google can read that. Um, mm -hmm. I think that it fits with my philosophy, and I'm very much a fan of the go giver philosophy, whereby you know, your job is to serve audiences. And if you can serve audiences and you can serve influencers, you will be rewarded. You absolutely will. Um, so if your platform of choice is your blog, I think that that's just a given. I, I don't think that you can really get a whole lot done in business without, at, at the very least, a, a minimally updated blog. I mean, that's just kind of a requirement. It just shows that you're alive. Right. Um, you know, but outside of that, I'm very much a multimedia guy and a media guy. So, um, you know, I, I do a lot of work with, with media partners where they say, well, hey, would you be interested in being a, a, a contributor and, and write content? And I say, well, you know, everybody does that. So, you know, much like yourself, Lori, um, you know, you're into video. And I think that that's really smart um, is to pick a platform that you really, really enjoy. Video takes a lot more time, but fewer people do it. It's yeah. like podcasts. I'm a big fan of podcasts. I've been podcasting for years. Um, and as a result, you know, I, and I've been very consistent. Um, you know, I'm not the best blogger in the world, but by golly, in, in the world of consumer savings and, and couponing and shopping, there's no one even close on the planet in terms of like the size of my podcast versus number two. There's, there is, I don't think there is a number two, but I've just been consistent and I've done it for a long period of time. So as a result, I have a huge audience. So again, yeah. um, I, I also love that philosophy of, you know, uh, in the book, now discover your strengths, identify, you know, the, the one or two things that you're just a master at and just, or, or that you really, really love and, and you think you have potential and you just, just, Grab a hold of that and don't bother with all the other stuff. Just pick one thing and just excel at that thing. So most professional athletes who really make a big name for themselves tend to be a master at one particular thing. So similarly, you know, maybe it's blogging, maybe it's vlogging, maybe it's, uh, you know, instant, you know, or live streaming video on social media, on Facebook or whatever, but okay. pick one thing and obsess on it. Yeah. Yeah. Great advice. Great advice. Now, how can we get in touch with you about uh, Savings Angels and the other things that you do? Sure. Well, you could just Google my name. And by the way, that's a very bold statement when you can say that. Um, just Google my name, Josh Elledge, and let me know what comes up. Uh, Josh Elledge, Elledge, by the way, is E-L-L-E-D-G-E. -E -E. So, um, so you can find me really easily that way. But you'll, yeah, you'll bump into Savings Angel. I do all, I do so much free stuff. It, it is it is a joy to serve uh, and help people in all ways. And of course, at Up NPR, we've got tons of free stuff as well. Lots of videos, lots of podcasts, lots of content. I really, really, really want this year to be the year that you break out. Um, yeah. you know, we're, we've been blessed to be able to help so many people. Uh, we, you know, we turn entrepreneurs into media celebrities and mm -hmm. it's a lot of fun to do so. It's great. Well, you're doing a great job. And again, that Twitter one was so good. I'm sure the rest of them are just as good. So thank you very much for being with us and I appreciate it and good luck to you, Josh. Thank you, Lori. I appreciate the opportunity to visit. Okay, good night. And thanks everybody. Uh, be back with us next week when we have another guest and we'll see you then.